Mission of Freedom drilled Iraqi Iraqi National Police to take over a medical mission and discovering multiple weapons caches in northern Iraq. These stories and more on today's FJI. Hello, I'm Air Force Sergeant Brayden Smith. Welcome to this edition of Freedom from Iraq. The Multinational Security Transition Command Iraq has teams which train all aspects of Iraqi security forces. Army Sergeant Mike Daly shows us how the Iraqi National Police use their coalition training to take over a medical mission. In the Baghdad suburbs of Dora and East Rashid, citizens are beginning to rely on a health clinic run by the Iraqi National Police. This is very important to us, uh, the treatment of uh, people. When the clinic initially opened, there was a problem getting people to show up. But after building some trust, this is no longer an issue. There's a lot of trust and more understanding that uh, the National Police are there to serve the people. Since February, the National Police have run a four-day-per-month cooperative medical engagement, or CME, at the clinic. Citizens walk or even wheel their way in. Elderly often arrive carrying their own x-ray. Each is hoping to see a doctor. The medical issues range dramatically, from severe illness to colds and stomach aches. Many who come in are parents who want a checkup for their children. Doctors and medics are trained by a U.S. Army National Police training team. So it's going pretty well as far as uh, them getting used to the rhythm of what we're doing here. Getting doctors to show isn't always easy. There are few in the area, and combat operations can make them hard to find. Supply of equipment and medicine is another issue. They do put in that uh, somehow uh, it, it gets turned around or doesn't get filled. Uh, but that's not at our level. I mean, our level is to get the, the brigade medics trained up. Uh, they get this clinic operational, and, and they're doing a tremendous job. Reporting for the Multinational Security Transition Command, Iraq, this is Army Staff Sergeant Mike Daly. In May, Iraqi forces backed by coalition troops began Operation Lion's Roy, a major offensive aimed at defeating al-Qaeda in Iraq. Operations continue in Hara, just north of Mosul, as Private First Class Zach Goodwin tells us about Operation Lion's Roar 2 and how Iraqi security forces continue to lead operations with increased capabilities. The role of coalition forces here in Iraq has changed in recent months thanks to the growing efficiency of the Iraqi security forces. Many ISF leaders have taken the wheel in recent operations and are now requiring less assistance from coalition forces. You can say all the Iraqi troops who work in this region they got like more knowledge, more experience, because we, we've been fighting Al-Qaeda and the jinn for a long time. Right now we have like uh, enough experience about that. Basically, all the Iraqi troops, they're doing this job or such as these operations professionally. Yeah, I've seen their capability increase over time, so that they need less and less uh, support from the coalition. Uh, these operations now, on a larger scale, are Iraqi army planned, so it's, it's, it's encouraging to do this. Operation Lion's Roar 2 was designed to clear the city of Hazwa of insurgent activity. The Iraqi Army's 31st Brigade, led by General Abdul Amir, conducted the mission with support from Delta Company 2nd Battalion 502nd Infantry Regiment. This is completely Iraqi Army 31st Brigade planned operation. All they asked for from the coalition was some support. And the coalition also provided the outer court on uh, in terms of shutting down the roads, the major roads that lead in and out of Hoswa so that the Iraqi army could do the searches. Lieutenant Colonel Getchell said the Hoswa region has seen an increase in al-Qaeda activity in the last month. The Iraqi army's 4th Battalion, 31st Brigade commander, Colonel Saeed, said he hoped this mission would help put an end to the remaining violence in the region. Those insurgents, they target sons of Iraqi program. All the leaders, all the sheikhs tried here in the street. They cause a lot of problems. They, they create more problems. They are involved to kill many, many innocent people. The Iraqi army detained over 60 individuals during the operation, confiscated 240 weapons, and found a small weapons cache containing 20 landmines, six soda cans filled with homemade explosives, and other bomb-making materials. Both coalition forces and Iraqi security forces felt the operation was successful disrupting al-Qaeda operations in the region and building the confidence of Iraqi security forces. Reporting from Hazwa, Iraq, I'm Army Private Zach Goodwin.
coming up, the provincial reconstruction teams with a new project in the hour. Here's your raid report. The Hilla Special Weapons and Tactics Team detained a suspected Al-Qaeda in Iraq member in the Diyala province. The suspect is allegedly part of a cell responsible for ethnic violence, kidnapping, and improvised explosive device attacks. Iraqi security forces detained two suspected special groups criminal leaders in central Iraq. The two suspects allegedly lead one of the most effective special group cells in the area. Sons of Iraq members, Iraqi army, and U.S. soldiers confiscated weapons caches in Baghdad. The caches consisted of artillery rounds, guided missiles, two pounds of unknown bulk explosives, and various weapon pieces. A tip led Iraqi and coalition soldiers to a cache in the Mahmoudia area. The cache included a 100-pound bag of C4 explosives, four wired blocks of C4, AK-47s, a sniper sight, and three load-bearing vests. And that's your raid report. I'm Petty Officer Aaron Hebner. Here are the latest Operation Iraqi Freedom headlines. According to a Ministry of Interior spokesman, the Iraqi security forces arrested the primary recruiter for female suicide bombers in Diyala. Foreign Minister Zabari told Turkey's Foreign Minister Iraq will use legal and constitutional means to find its own solutions to questions about Kirkuk and will not accept foreign interference. Iraq will deploy nearly 40,000 Iraqi security forces to Karbala this month to protect pilgrims commemorating the birth of Imam al-Mahdi. Iraqi officials say 2,000 police women are being deployed to help detect female suicide bombers. Lieutenant General North said the Air Force may rely on the MQ-9 Reaper to keep the peace as U.S. combat forces redeploy. He says putting unmanned aircraft in the skies for longer periods of time will increase the persistence there. Those are your headlines from around the region. I'm Airman First Class Shailen Jordan. Hi, I'm Mike Rowe. As the host of Dirty Jobs, I get shot every day by a cameraman. Things are a little different for you guys. Remember, survival and safety go hand in hand. When you're riding around in one of these, always wear your safety belt. Always wear your helmet. Always wear your IBA. And always secure your load, no matter what you're hauling. Is there an ocean around here? Not with power. On the edge. The wartime provincial reconstruction team is helping the citizens of Bakuba and the Diala province reestablish businesses. A current project is getting Diala Electric Industries going. Army Sergeant Christina Harwell has more from Diala. Diala Electrical Industries is helping thousands of people in the Diala province by manufacturing equipment and supplying jobs. The electrical company is located in a factory complex of Bakuba and has over 3,000 employees, many of them highly skilled. It's the only company in Iraq to make power transformers, spark plugs, and fiber optic cable. Members of the provincial reconstruction team helped factory leaders revamp the company's organization. Mr. David Matthews, the senior economic advisor for the province of Diyala, says he is happy with the progress that has been made. I'm incredibly pleased with the progress that we've made to date. Incredibly pleased. It's more than I had thought we would get to at this point. The PRT is working to obtain funding for the replacement parts of broken machinery. The majority of the machinery in the factory is at least 25 years old and in need of repair. The employees make the best of the equipment to meet production needs. The PRT is working to get more computer and internet access for the workers. The workers at the factory currently do business by hand without the help of spreadsheets or project management software. Reporting for 2nd SCR in Bob War Horse Iraq, I'm Army Sergeant Christina Harwell. And that wraps up this edition of our program. Be sure to log on to mnf-irak.com where you can learn all about the progress coalition forces are making throughout the country. If you have story ideas, we'd love to hear them. Email us at fji at iraq.centcom.mil. From all of us here at AFN and Freedom Journal Iraq, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.